Hello Electroheads, I'm Rich and I am frustrated about something. It's a common consensus that EVs are the way forward. They have lower lifetime emissions than ICE cars and the national grids that we use to power electric cars are increasingly moving to renewable energy sources. Some scientists and experts quite fairly point out that electric cars are not a panacea. They aren't perfect. That's absolutely fine, but we are a car addicted world and electric cars are a major step forward. Other than just ditching cars altogether and switching to bicycles and personal electric vehicles, electric cars are the best way forward right now. Except the uncomfortable truth is looking at the reality of the electric car market right now, there are solutions that's really only available to the richest members or the wealthiest portions of our society. I see comments on YouTube and Reddit every single day from well-meaning people who want to drive an electric car but simply cannot afford one. It's well documented and well known that owning an electric car is actually cheaper than owning a petrol or a diesel car, but this isn't about the cost of ownership, it's about the cost of entry. All that most people want in a car is decent boot space, decent range and decent safety standards. You can get that on numerous petrol and diesel cars for 10 to 15,000 pounds. But for an electric car, you're looking at pretty much double that cost to get most of those basic needs ticked. This means that there are potentially millions of people out there who want to make the right choice for the environment and for public health, but simply cannot afford to. Instead, those people are reading things like the latest IPCC report on climate change and having to knowingly contribute to the abysmal situation that we find ourselves in by driving petrol and diesel cars, even though they want to drive electric. That is an incomprehensibly stupid situation for humanity to be in. What will you learn that your actions have consequences? Is it even possible to build an affordable electric car? Let's take a look at that. But before I do, please like and subscribe. We've got loads of other videos like this, so I'm sure if you're enjoying it, you'll enjoy our other videos. Right. Is an affordable electric car even possible right now? The signs point to the fact that it is. There are numerous incredibly affordable electric cars on sale in China. There's a very affordable electric car for sale right now in India. The Chinese GWM Aura is basically a Honda E, they're not even trying to hide it, but it's for sale in China for five or six thousand pounds. The Wuling Huangguang, which I've definitely not pronounced correctly, but I'm gonna roll with, is a small family EV that's for sale for three thousand pounds. Now, these cars wouldn't necessarily pass European safety standards, but it just shows that the technology is not as expensive as European and American auto manufacturers are making out that it is right now. There are plenty of well-built electric cars with a decent range available in China for between 10 and $20,000. But in the US and Europe, if you look at what's available right now on the market, we have some fairly short range hatchbacks available that are gonna cost you more than 20,000 pounds. Some are upwards of 30,000 pounds. And the near future doesn't look too much better either. If you look at a list of cars due to be released in North America and Europe between now and 2025, it's chock a block full of expensive luxury SUVs and luxury saloons, hopelessly designed to take on the Tesla Model S, but almost a decade too late. This is partly because the richest car companies tend to be the mid to high end manufacturers like Audi, Mercedes and BMW. Developing brand new electric cars takes a huge amount of R&D investment. It takes a huge amount of investment in sourcing the parts on an industrial scale. And this favors the richer car companies over the smaller, more affordable car companies. Given the incredible demand worldwide for electric cars right now, those companies' CEOs would be immediately fired if they funneled all of that investment and R&D into affordable cars with low profit margins. Instead, they've come to the market with beautiful cars loaded with awesome features, and some of those cars are absolutely changing the game. But as much as I love the Audi e-tron GT or the Porsche Taycan, for example, it's not those car companies that we should be celebrating the most right now. The humble Skoda Enyaq is wiping the floor with some of its competitors in Europe at the moment. It's equal for sales in May and June in Europe with the VW ID4. It's ahead of the Mercedes EQC for the same period. It's ahead of the Mustang Mach-E. I call it humble, the Enyaq is still part of the problem. It costs 32,000 pounds for the base model, offering only 250 miles of range, and it's just a bit more fancy than a Skoda ever really needs to be. But the Enyaq is a step in the right direction in many ways, just like the Dacia Spring Electric, which is selling incredibly well in Italy. It's actually outselling the VW ID3 and the Renault Zoe. Sadly, we don't have the Spring Electric in the UK, but 
I'm fully convinced it's the direction we need to be going in. I've never actually driven one, but I bloody love it. Depending on how the grants work in your country, it can be bought for anything from 13,000 euros up to 20,000 euros, opening up the EV market to a much wider audience. It doesn't have any superfluous tech, just the basics. The downside, it only has a range of 105 miles. That basically makes it just a city car or a suburban car. And that's fine, but if you're a family that can only afford one car, then it just doesn't fulfill all of your needs. If the Spring Electric with its top speed of 78 miles an hour and its hilariously adorable 0 to 60 time of something like 15 seconds had a range of 250 miles or more, I promise you I would buy it in a heartbeat. We don't need heated seats or over-engineered infotainment systems. We don't even need 0 to 60 times of three to four seconds, even though that is really fun. Most people just want an electric car that goes forward when you press the accelerator, that stops when you press the brake, and that goes around corners when you turn the steering wheel. Is that too much to ask? In countries like America, where they don't even have corners, you actually don't even need the steering wheel, so that must save quite a lot of money. Maybe as battery technology improves and that R&D investment starts paying off, we might see more electric cars or even just some electric cars with 250 miles of range or more for that 10 to 20,000 pound bracket. But right now in North America and Europe, it's not looking hugely promising. We need to make it easier for people to make the right choice. And I honestly think that rich car companies need to shoulder responsibility here and be proactive in creating affordable routes into EV ownership. The public health situation around toxic air is dire right now, not to mention the old uh, existential threat of climate change. Research from the World Health Organization suggests that air pollution may be damaging every single organ in your body, including your penis. The effects of this air pollution include lung disease, heart disease, dementia, diabetes, depression, and reduced intelligence. Guys, I do not need reduced intelligence. I have no IQ to spare. I've got asthma as well. I'm literally falling apart here. Please make electric cars affordable. I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. I know this stuff is tough to hear. Even if you are an EV advocate or an environmentalist, it's just depressing to listen to. But the fact is, the urgency with which we need to act is way ahead of the urgency with which governments and auto manufacturers are actually acting. Leaded petrol, which was banned in the UK 20 years ago, still lingers in the air in London. It takes decades for us to detoxify our air. It would take decades even if we all stopped driving internal combustion engine cars tomorrow. Add into all of this the chirpy fact that as glacial ice melts, it releases loads of methane and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that had previously been trapped. And we're basically nonchalantly striding towards a cliff edge. So car company CEOs, on the off chance that you watch my videos, please just create more affordable routes into EV ownership. And the good people of YouTube, please switch from ICE cars to EV cars as soon as you can afford to. The next generation will thank you and my IQ won't deplete as quickly as it currently is. And I will thank you as well. Nice. And until you can afford to go electric, perhaps just try cutting down on journeys in cars in the city. Electric bikes are a great way to get around a city, especially when you don't have too far to travel, and especially when it's not raining. For now, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to our channel and let me know in the comments what you want to see next in the electric car world. See you next time.